Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and press the bell icon. In this video, you'll learn how to log in using email, username, or phone number in Laravel 12. During registration, to keep things secure and professional, we'll make sure usernames cannot contain certain reserved words like admin or moderator. This helps prevent impersonation of system roles or staff accounts. We'll implement this by creating a custom validation rule in Laravel that checks if the username contains any restricted keywords and rejects them during registration. Before proceeding, let's take a quick look at the demo. Here, I'm on the register page. Enter your name and email. In the username field, enter something like admin, which is a reserved username. Then, enter a 10-digit phone number, your password, and confirm password. Finally, click on Create Account. You can see an error. The username cannot contain admin or moderator, case insensitive, because admin is a reserved username. Now, enter moderator as the username, and you'll see the same error, because moderator is also a reserved username. If you enter only digits as the username, you'll see an error. The username cannot contain only numbers. Now, enter admin123 as the username, with admin in capital letters. Even though it includes numbers, you'll still see the error. The username cannot contain admin or moderator, case insensitive. That's because the word admin is part of the username and it's a reserved keyword. If you try to use moderator123 as the username, you'll see the same error because it contains the reserved word moderator. If you add 123 at the beginning of moderator, like 123 moderator, you'll still get the same error because it contains a reserved word. If you use 123 admin, you'll still get the same error. Now, let's use John12345 as the username and click Create Account. Your account will be created, and you'll be redirected to the dashboard. Click here, then click Log Out to log out. Click here to go to the login page. Enter email and password and click on Login, and you will be redirected to the dashboard page. Click here to log out. Go back to the login page. Now, instead of email, enter username and password and click on login and you will be redirected to the dashboard page. Click here, then click log out to log out. Go back to the login page. Now, enter your registered phone number and password, then click login. You'll be redirected to the dashboard page. We were able to log in using email, username, and phone number. Now, let's see how to implement this functionality. Go to the directory where you want to install your Laravel app and open a terminal. Then, type the command, Laravel new your project name and press enter. During the setup, for the starter kit, type Livewire and press enter. For the authentication provider, type Laravel and press enter. For Laravel Vault, type no and press enter. For the testing framework, type zero and press enter. It will take some time to download, depending on your internet connection, so please wait for the download to complete. Now type yes to run npm install and npm run build. The download is complete. Now, type cd your project name to navigate to the project directory. Open your project in Visual Studio Code. Open .env file. First, uncomment these lines and replace SQLite with MySQL. Next, enter your database name. Copy this database name. Now let's create a database. Go to your browser and open PHP My Admin. Click on New. Paste the database name which you have copied and click on Create to create the database. The database has been created. Next, we need to migrate the database. Click here and open a new terminal. In your terminal, type the command php artisan migrate to migrate the database. 
The database has been migrated. Now type the command composer run dev. This command will run both PHP artisan serve and npm run dev commands. Now, go to your browser and navigate to localhost colon 8000, and you should see the new Laravel 12 welcome page. Click on register link and you should see the register page. Here we will add two new fields, username and phone number. Click on login to go to the login page. Here, we'll add the functionality that allows users to log in using their email, username, or phone number. First, we need to create a migration file to add username and phone columns to the user's table. Click here and select Command Prompt to open a new command prompt. Now, type the command PHP Artisan, make colon migration in double quotes add username and phone to user's table and press enter. This will create a new migration file for updating the user's table. Open database slash migrations folder, and you will find the newly created migration file. Here, we need to add the username and phone columns to the table. In the up method, first add a username column that is unique and placed after the email column. Then, add a phone column with a maximum length of 10 characters, which is also unique, and place it after the username column. The down method is used to reverse the changes made in the up method. So here we'll remove the username and phone columns by calling the drop column method. Now we need to migrate the database. Open your terminal. Type the command php artisan migrate and press enter to migrate the database. The migration was successful. Go back to PHP My Admin, click on the Users table, and you'll see that the username and phone columns have been added. You'll see the username column right after email and the phone column right after username. Now let's update the register Livewire component and view to include the new username and phone fields in the registration form. Open register.php file located inside the app slash Livewire auth folder. Now, add public properties for username and email and initialize them with empty strings. These properties will be used to bind the input values from the registration form, and setting a default empty value ensures the form loads without any errors. Next, we need to add validation rules for these properties. Duplicate this line. Replace email with username. Remove lowercase and email rules. Next, admin colon 3 and max colon 30 to ensure the username is at least 3 characters long and no more than 30 characters. The unique rule ensures that each username is unique in the user's table. Now, add alpha underscore dash rule to allow only letters, numbers, dashes, and underscores in the username. This prevents the use of spaces or special characters. Next, add the not underscore edge x rule to prevent users from using usernames made up of only numbers. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This ensures that usernames include at least one letter. Now, let's add validation rules for phone number. Copy this email validation rules. Paste the copied rules here. Replace email with phone. Replace string with digits colon 10 to make sure the phone number is exactly 10 digits long. It must contain only numbers and no extra characters like dashes or spaces. Remove these rules and keep the unique rule as is to ensure that each phone number is unique in the user's table. Now, let's create a custom validation rule to prevent users from choosing usernames that contain restricted words like admin or moderator. This helps avoid impersonation of system roles or staff accounts. Open your terminal. Type the command php artisan make colon rule not reserved username and press enter. This will generate a not reserved username class that implements the validation rule interface. Open not reserved username.php file located inside the app slash rules folder. Now, inside the validate method, we'll use stripos.php function to check if the username contains the words admin or moderator, ignoring case. 
We use STRIPOS because it allows us to search for substrings without worrying about letter casing. For example, it will catch admin123 or moderator underscore user. If a match is found, the rule fails with a custom error message. This ensures that usernames can't contain the words admin or moderator, regardless of how they're capitalized or where they appear in the string. Next, open register.php file and include the not reserved username rule in the validation rules for the username field. Also, make sure to import the not reserved username class at the top of the file. Now we need to add form inputs for username and phone number inside register livewire view file. Open register.blade.php file located inside resources slash views slash livewire slash auth folder. Duplicate this email input twice. Add comments for username and phone inputs. In username input, replace the property email with username. Add a label, set the type to text, and add a placeholder for the username field. Next, in the phone input, replace the property email with phone. Add a label, set the type to tell, set max length to 10, and add a placeholder for the phone number. Change the input type from text to tell. Next, we need to add username and phone to the dollar feeable array in the user model. Open user model and add these fields to the dollar feeable array. Go to your browser and click on sign up to open the register page. You'll now see that the username and phone input fields have been added. Enter your name and email. In the username field, enter some random digits. In the phone field, enter an eight digit number. Then add your password, confirm it, and click on Create Account. You'll see two errors, one saying the username format is invalid, and another saying the phone number must be 10 digits. Now in the username field, enter admin and in the phone field, add some random text. Then click on Create Account. You will see two errors. The username cannot contain admin or moderator and the phone field must be 10 digits. Next, enter admin123 as the username, a 10 digit phone number, and then click on create account. Now you will see only one error. The username cannot contain admin or moderator, case insensitive. Next, enter moderator as the username and click on create account, and you will see the same error. If you enter moderator123 or 123 moderator, and click on create account, you'll see the same error. The username cannot contain admin or moderator, case insensitive. Finally, add John12345 as the username and click on create account. Your account will be created and you'll be redirected to the dashboard page. Go to phpMyAdmin and click on the users table. You'll see that the username and phone fields have been added. Go to your dashboard, click here to log out. Click on Login to go to the Login page. Enter your email and password and click on Login. You'll be redirected to the dashboard page. Click here to log out. Click on Login to go to the Login page. Now we need to add the logic to allow login using email, username, or phone number as well. Go back to Visual Studio Code. Open login.php file. Duplicate the email property along with its validation rules, and then comment out the original one. Remove the email validation rule. Replace the email property with $auth identifier, which will handle login via email, username, or phone. Next, in the login method, we'll determine the type of login input, whether it's an email, username, or phone number. By default, we set $login underscore type to username. 
Then, we check if the input is a valid email using filter underscore var. Here, we use filter underscore validate underscore email, which ensures the format matches a standard email structure. If it's valid, we set $login underscore type to email. Otherwise, we check if it matches a 10-digit number using preg underscore match. And if so, we set it to phone. Now, replace email, dollar this email with dollar login underscore type, dollar this auth identifier so that the login attempt uses the correct identifier based on the input, whether it's an email, username, or phone number. Also, update the error message key to auth identifier auth.failed to match the new input field name. Next, replace email with auth identifier in both the error message array and the throttle key method. This ensures that validation and rate limiting work correctly and display errors under the proper input field, regardless of whether the user logs in with an email, username, or phone number. Now, we need to add the auth identifier input field to the login form. Open login.blade.php file, which is located inside resources slash views slash livewire slash auth folder. Replace wire model equals email with wire model equals auth identifier to bind the input to the new property. Set the input type to text. Remove the autocomplete attribute. Add a placeholder that suggests email, username, or phone. For example, email at example.com slash John Doe slash 9876543210. And set the label to email, username, or phone. Our login functionality is complete. Now let's check if we're able to log in using email, username, and phone number. Go back to the login page and you'll see that the email input label has been changed to email username, or phone. Enter your email and password, then click on Login. You'll be redirected to the dashboard page. Click here to log out, then click on Login to go to Login page. Enter your username and password, and then click on Login. You will be redirected to the dashboard page. Click here to log out. Now click on login to go to login page. Enter your phone number and password and then click on login. You will be redirected to the dashboard page. As you saw, we were able to successfully log in using email, username, and phone number. In this video, we learned how to log in a user using email, username, and phone number. We also learned how to restrict users from choosing usernames like admin or moderator during registration. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Feel free to drop any questions or comments below, and I'll be happy to help. I will see you in next tutorial. Till then, stay safe.